spirits. Uh, I'm not going to be before you too long. I believe the Lord has spoken already. Amen. Sister Robin said something in, in her message about not being moved away, not being tossed like children yeah. to and for by every wind of doctrine. Yeah. The Bible says that we as Christians, as the body of Christ, cannot be immature or underdeveloped so that we are tossed like a kid who has not developed their own senses to discern between right and wrong, truth, false. And so because they have not discerned their own ability to reason and to understand anything that is said to them has the ability to move them. Yeah, yeah. Because they themselves have not been developed enough to judge. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to, one of the things that happen in, as we grow is that we learn by life and through experiences how to judge, mm -hmm. how to listen, how to hear, how to look beyond what is seen and hear beyond what is said. And we learn how to proceed, not just see, but to proceed, to understand. But that's not something that a child has. A child can only go off of what you tell them because they have not yet developed those senses. And so because they have not developed those senses, they're moved by everything. You tell them this man, the, um, you can teach them about the, the, um, the, the um, Easter Bunny, you can teach them about Santa Claus, yes. you can teach them about the Two Fairy, and they'll believe all of that. Mm -hmm. Because they themselves have not developed their own senses. Yes. And so when you don't have developed senses, then you have to trust in somebody else's senses. Mm -hmm. And that makes you vulnerable to whatever they want to say, mm -hmm. what they want to show you, what they want to tell you because you yourself have not developed your own senses. And so Paul's prayer and the mission of the leadership of the body of Christ, because I believe that's what uh, he was talking about in Ephesians. If I'm not mistaken, Paul was talking about the, the, um, the fivefold ministry, talking about uh, the reason why God gave the fivefold ministry is so that they would be able to develop the people of God so that they would become mature. So that they would develop their senses. Uh -huh. So that they would not be tossed to and fro like little children. Mm -hmm. Because what we see right now in the world is just the tossing of people. Mm -hmm. And we're going from one thing to another. Yes. Yes, sir. We're going from one storm to another storm. Yes. And this is just the tossing of children. And anybody, whether you're a Christian or not, anybody who is not developed in their senses is going to get caught up in the tossing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the Christians are caught up in the tossing because they have never developed their senses to be able to be rooted in the word of God and to be able to discern between what's right and what's wrong and to have a firm root in the God and the word of God and the God that they serve so that no matter what comes down the pipe, they're able to stand and hold their ground. The purpose of the storm is to move you. The purpose of the storm is to overthrow you. The purpose of the storm is to turn you around. The devil doesn't matter what storm he said. The storm has a purpose. The storm is designed to flip you upside down, to turn you over and around, to mix you all up, to get you off of the place that God wants you to be. One of the things that we have to understand as the body of Christ is that we are not of this world. Right. This world is not our home. This kingdom is not our kingdom. We belong to a new kingdom. We have a different home. We are not of this world. And what goes on in this world, we have to learn how to make a distinction between them and us. All right. We have to learn how to make a distinction 
distinction between them and us. What happens to them and what they're subject to is not what happens to us and what we're subject to. If you don't learn how to make that distinction, you're not going to be able to hold your ground. Because the hits going to keep coming. We are entered into a season where the hits are going to keep on coming. And if you don't learn how to separate yourself between them and the world, you are going to be in trouble. Amen. And I'm talking to the church. Even when the virus came, a lot of churches shut down. Because they was not able to separate themselves from the world. And they took on the mindset that whatever's going on in the world is going to also go on in the body of Christ. But that's not the word of God. Amen. That's not the word of God. But if you have not developed your spiritual senses to be able to discern between what is good and what is wrong, what is right and what is wrong, what's of the kingdom and what is of the world, then you'll get caught up in the same noise that everybody else is caught up in. Something, listen to this, and I told y'all this when the virus came. Something else is going to come. Yes. That's right. Something else is going to come. That's right. So what are you going to do when something else comes? All right. We have entered into a season where our eyes should be upon the heavens. Jesus, right. waiting, looking. We have entered into a season where we must set our eyes on the heavens. Because the Bible says the same Jesus that you saw leave today when he was tucking up by the cloud, he said the same Jesus is going to return unto you the same way. This is a season where we need to set our Uh, the man of God 
God went up to the mountain. He was ready to go into the land. He saw the angel standing up with his sword. He said, whose side are you on? Are you for us or against us? The angel said, I'm not for you or against you. He says, I'm here that the word of God, that the will of God will be done. I'm not with you or against you. He says, I am here to do the will of God. And that's the mindset that the body of Christ has to come to. I'm not on nobody's side. I am here to do the will of God. I am here to speak truth to power. I don't care if you're white or black. I don't care if you're rich or poor. Psalms 91. I'll be giving y'all 
the book of Psalms not going to lie. Because we've been going through some rough seasons, some rough things in this season, I should say. I'm going to give you another verse from that. From Psalms 91. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what color. My stance does not change. You operate by a different key. We operate by a different key. We, we walk in righteousness. It doesn't matter. We don't, we don't, it's not about picking sides, because both sides got wrong. Yeah. It's about righteousness. Amen. It's about righteousness. We, we preach righteousness. We don't preach morality, because morality changes. Morality is, this, is, is, is established by the people, by the majority. They are the ones who determine what is morally acceptable. Morality is designed by the people. It's, it's established by the people. Morals change That's because right. they are established by people. Mm -hmm. And so if you get enough people in the group who say this behavior is okay, then the morality has shifted. Yes. That's why we don't teach morality. I don't teach morals because morals move. Mm -hmm. We teach righteousness. Because righteousness does not move. Whatever God said was wrong back then, he still said it's wrong right now. Whatever God said is right back then, he still said it's right right now. He doesn't change. His word does not change. He's not shifting about. He's not moving with the people. Whatever he said, he said he meant it. So that's why we preach righteousness because the standard does not change. Uh, what does... Um, that, that's the first thing. What did he say? Um, nine, nine verse eight, because thou hast laid the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thou hast it. All right, that's it. He says, listen, because, and this is something I want you to come to. Believe. He says, because you, he says, because you, thank you, has made the Lord you have made the Lord your habitation. He says, Corey, because you, this is something that I have to do because I have made the Lord my habitation, my dwelling place, the place where I live, the place where I reside. He says, you, Corey, have made the Lord your habitation. My question to you is, have you made the Lord your habitation? Amen. That's the only question you need to decide. Have you, have we made the Lord our dwelling place? Is he where we live? Is he where we dwell? Is he where we have our life? Is our life in him? Because if the Lord is my habitation, then it does not matter what comes. Amen. It does not matter what the next thing is. And the reason why I'm giving you this, <clears throat> because something else is coming. It's just a season that we live in. Something else is coming. But if we have made the Lord, just cut the whole thing off. Cut the power off to the system. If we have made the Lord our habitation, uh -huh. then it doesn't matter what else comes. Mm -hmm. All right. Because he is the place where I do it. Yes. He's the place where I live. He's the place where I abide. He's the place where I live my life. And so whatever comes in the world, it's okay. Don't You have to declare it out of your mouth. Your mouth is so important right now. Declare it out of your mouth. God is my habitation. The Lord is my dwelling place. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my shelter in which I trust. I have set my eyes upon the Lord. I have set my heart upon the Lord. And he is my strength. He is my refuge and my help. See, this is the way you got to talk. This, you got to 